Most biblical scholars agree that Jesus himself spoke about coming back to the earth a second time, what's commonly referred to as the second coming. In the Gospel of Matthew, Jesus is quoted as saying that we shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds with power and great glory. But what it doesn't say is that he'll arrive in Siberia. And yet, that's where one isolated religious community believes he has landed. Clarissa Ward now reports from the heart of Russia with the latest instalment of our series, Faith Matters. Two white robed men were standing there among them and said, Men of Galilee, men of Galilee why are you standing there staring at the sky? Jesus has gone away to heaven, and someday, just as he went, he will return. Deep in the heart of Siberia's birch forest lies one of the largest and most remote religious communes on the planet, the Church of the Last Testament. More than 5,000 people live in this wilderness. They have left behind their families and their homes to follow this man. He is known simply as Visarion, meaning he who gives new life, or as the teacher. He has more than 10,000 followers worldwide, and he claims that he is Jesus Christ. Getting to Visarion's commune is not easy. From New York City, it's more than 4,000 miles to Moscow, the Russian capital. From there, it's another 2,000 miles across four time zones. So we've arrived in the city of Abakan. We're actually closer now to Mongolia than we are to Moscow. We've been flying for five hours, and now we're getting ready for the long drive ahead. Abakan is a bleak city dotted with crumbling czarist buildings and Soviet-style blocks. It's also the nearest town to Vissarion's base. Certainly everyone here knew who he was, but they didn't seem to like him much. Once out of the city, the drab concrete of Abakan gives way to rich rolling plains and clear rivers. After hours on the road, we reach Petropavlskaya, where more than 80% of the residents are followers of Visarion. Life here is very basic. The followers are strict vegetarians and they don't smoke or drink. The houses and churches are built from wood by hand. There are few cars and most energy comes from windmills and solar panels. At the follower school, young boys are taught how to build model ships and young girls learn crochet and singing. Surrounded by such beautiful nature, it seems an idyllic place for a child. But the portraits of Vissarion that adorned every wall were difficult to ignore. Christmas here has been abolished and replaced by a new celebration on Vissarion's birthday. The biggest holiday of the year takes place on August 18th, the anniversary of the teacher's first sermon. And a new calendar has been introduced which dates from the year of his birth, making this year 48. Vissarion was born Sergei Tarov in 1961. Up until his revelation, he worked as a traffic cop in southern Russia. He started the Church of the Last Testament in 1991, the same year as the collapse of the Soviet Union. It was a desperate and chaotic time. After decades of religious oppression, suddenly thousands of new religions and sects burst onto the scene, all claiming to have the answers that people were so hungrily craving. The next day we continued driving, bumping along rutted roads thick with white butterflies. We stopped by the river to talk to Siegfried Warner, who left his home in Germany to move here. Many of Vissarion's followers are educated people from all over Europe. They used to work as engineers, teachers. There's even a Belarusian deputy minister. It's all about Vissarion. I had an experience when I uh, went from Italy. He, uh, he embraced me very warmly. He took, he took my hand and then my, my heart spoke. And that was a time when I never doubted again that he was a Christ. This was a community where people followed their hearts more than their heads. 
so we've been driving along about three hours and uh, that's as far as the road goes so the rest of our journey is going to be on foot. The trek through the Siberian forest known as the taiga is brutal. Massive mosquitoes swarm menacingly overhead and ticks are everywhere. Unsurprisingly, almost two-thirds of Asarian's followers have been infected with Lyme disease. The group eschews modern medicine, relying instead on holistic remedies. One of the teacher's 60 commandments declares, in most cases, illness is punishment for an inability to keep one's flesh in harmony with nature. In the 1990s, there were reports that some of his followers died after refusing medical attention. After hours of walking, we finally reached a boat of dawn, a small settlement where 250 of Vissarion's most devout followers live, four miles from the nearest road and just a couple of miles below the teacher himself. <laughs> At this point, we were assigned minders who monitored our movements until we left. The villagers in a boat of dawn follow an almost entirely vegan diet, largely based on what they can grow themselves. When they move here, they give the church their pensions and whatever possessions they may have. In return, they receive basics such as sugar, buckwheat and flour. No money is used within the community, but they are given an allowance of 300 rubles, about $12 a month. The followers here were even more zealous when talking about the teacher. У меня душа сразу узнала. Я просто от, не могла сдержать своих эмоций. Я просто кричала: "Это он! Это он! Он на земле! Я его узнала! Он на земле!" Как будто бы с неба шел какой-то поток, и мое тело все дрожало мелко, мелко, мелко. Vissarion has said and they believe that they are living in the time of God's judgment. They pour over his ten volumes of teachings. Life here seems visibly more cut off from society. The children are homeschooled. Five times a day a bell rings and the followers turn solemnly to pray towards the mountaintop where Vissarion lives. On Sunday, the community congregates early to begin the rituals of the Holy Day. People dress up for the occasion. So after some singing and some prayers, the followers are now beginning the long trek up to the top of the mountain where they'll see their teacher. The walk up is steep and the followers stop repeatedly to sing hymns. <laughs> Once at the top of the mountain, they gather at an altar for more songs and prayer. The intensity of their fervor was palpable. As the liturgy drew to a close, I felt excited. We were getting closer to meeting Vissarion. It was time. Can you start by telling me some of the main principles of your religion? Такие же, как и у всех религий. Любить, учиться друг друга. Люди должны. Are you Jesus Christ? Этот ответ не нужен. What sort of a relationship do you have with your followers? Они учатся. Стараются следовать всему, что я им открою. Do you believe in Judgment Day? Есть время. Определенный период времени, за который должна решаться судьба человеческого общества всего на Земле. Этот период идет. Уже идет. Maybe you could just tell me something that interests you or um, our viewers, something that you think might interest Americans. Мне ничего не интересно говорить. Для них еще время не пришло. He wouldn't elaborate on what will happen at the end of the period of judgment, nor when that would be. For Vissarion, conventional calendars are meaningless. It seemed the interview was over before it began. I hadn't expected Jesus to be a man of so few words. Leaving, I noticed a quad bike parked out front. It seemed ironic when his followers were trekking up and down the mountain. I felt inexplicably disappointed, and I wondered about what the future would hold for his devoted community.
Yet the number of Vissarion's followers continues to grow, as more and more people abandon their lives and flock to this small corner of the world and to this chameleon of a man. Vissarion, the teacher, Jesus Christ, or perhaps just Sergei Tarop, the self-proclaimed messiah of Siberia. I'm Clarissa Ward for Nightline in Siberia, Russia.